But the question is, do you have the courage to stand out? Do you have the courage to be an unborrowed visionary? Do you have the courage to get ridiculed, violently opposed, and, and chastised by the herd by coming up with something new? I'm going to make a statement here. This probably maybe shocks some of you. I don't know. There are no rules out there other than the universal laws. <laughs> There's just rules that people come up with to protect themselves from their own fears. Now, think about this. If I go to my, uh, if, if, if I, let's say I had, uh, 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 there's a daughter and uh, let's say that daughter comes to me and says, daddy, 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 I got on the honor roll this, this, this month and I've got to be prom queen and I got to be voted as the student body president. And I just found out I got a, a, a scholarship to, to Harvard and um, I've been saving my money like you taught me and I've now saved a certain amount of money and I wanna pay for my own school and, and, and even the, and with a scholarship, I'm gonna earn it my way. And, uh, and by the way, I'm, I'm dating the most popular boy and uh, he looks just like you, daddy. And, uh, and, and, he, and all of a sudden she says things that really support your values. And daddy, is there any way I can borrow the car tonight? <laughs> when things support your values, you lack the rules and you go, sure, I'm proud of you. By the way, anytime a parent's proud of a child, it's nothing to do with the child's action because pride is never what they do. Pride is what you think you did that led to them doing it. <laughs> so what happens is if you're proud of your child, it means that you're basically taking credit for the, their action and it matches your values and you're, you're actually thinking you made it happen, which is a delusion. So pride is automatically gonna set you up for an illusion. They're gonna end up humbling you. Then you're gonna blame yourself for that same opposite behavior. Well, what happens if your daughter comes to you and says, daddy, 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 I'm pregnant. And uh, I don't know who the father was because I went to a gangbang and I, I took on 20 men and I don't know what it is. And by the time we were doing drugs and when I bought the drugs, I stole your credit card and the police are looking for your credit card and they may come and get, uh, come and take you. I don't know, they may blame you because I'm still underage. And anyway, when I did it, I stored it at the house and I think they're on the way to the house. They may be searching the house. And, and, and then she does a bunch of stuff. And by the way, I, I've, I dropped out of school and, and I owe a bunch of people uh, money and they, they're, they're drug dealers. And I think they're gonna come and try to get it and steal from the house. And daddy, can I borrow the car to leave the country? <laughs> well, now all of a sudden, if his values is challenged, he's gonna tax those rules and put all the rigid autocratic behaviors in there. Cause whenever we end up with our values really challenged, we get autocratic. When our values are really supported, we lax the rules. When our values are really challenged, we tax the rules. Society has a set of rules and whoever has power in society sets them. And whoever has the least power in society doodly follows them. And anybody down below who tries to interfere with the rules above is gonna be squashed with automatic autocratic behaviors. Now, the fear of, of what's gonna to happen to that makes us submit and subordinate. In the process of doing it, we wanna fit in like the sheep because we're afraid to stand up against all the authority. And people that really like conspiracy theories that like to think and exaggerate authority and minimize their power are vulnerable to this. So the second you actually go in there and you realize that you're subordinating to that, you're gonna go, I should be doing this. I need to be doing this. I gotta be doing this because otherwise I'm gonna be rejected or I'm gonna have consequences. And I, but really, whoever has the power sets the rules. And if you empower yourself, you get to set them. And there's no boundaries on what those are. And there's no ultimate rules. You know, in some countries, uh, there are in, in South Africa, you have countries where that the president had nine wives. In other countries, you go to prison for that. It's called bigamy or polygamy. So you're not allowed to do it. So one place it's a, it's considered power and influence and you got a leader that that way. Here you don't. And in some countries you're allowed to do certain things. Other countries you're not. So the rules are not necessarily rules of, of the universe unless they're universal laws. Those are the only ones that we all submit to. That's why I teach those in my breakthrough programs and all my programs. I want you to know what are actual laws that nobody violates instead of all subordination to all the little rules that just happen to be there. And as a result of that, we, we end up subordinating because we don't actually confront things. Albert Einstein, when he was about 18, 19 years old, was in a class with Philip Leonard, who was a professor who was a Nobel Prize winner at the time and was the authority. He had done the photoelectric effect and, and he was the authority in the world. And Einstein found a flaw in his, in his work and spoke, pointed it out in the class, in front of the whole class, which was absolutely not accepted at that time because you were, there were autocrats. This is in Germany and you just didn't do it, it was autocratic. 
And so he was chastised for that by the teacher. And the teacher spent many years trying to destroy Albert Einstein. And he didn't get one of his Nobel Prizes because of it. And he even was friends with Hitler. And he basically went after and tried to get Hitler to assassinate Einstein. It's a very fascinating story. But Einstein stood up. And he, he had the courage to stand up against the authority and say, wait a minute now, I'm dedicated to truth. What you're saying is flawed. I'm going to stand. If you want to kill me, eventually it's going to be found out. And you're going to look foolish because you killed the person that had the true answer. So go ahead. And he says, and if for some reason, God's laws don't match the one I found, I feel sorry for God. That's how confident he was because he really did his homework on it. And math, math, the, the mathematics made sense. Turned out that he was accurate. He later got his, his Nobel Prize for it, but uh, it, was, it was suppressed for many years and because of one guy. But the question is, do you have the courage to stand out? Do you have the courage to be an unborrowed visionary? Do you have the courage to get ridiculed, violently opposed, and, and chastised by the herd by coming up with something new? And if you do, you're going to stand out. You're going to be the one that's uh, going to get the, the corner of the market because eventually the new paradigm is born. I'm creating a new model out there in psychology. I'm building up a, a culture of people around the world that are now using it. Eventually, those numbers are going to get pretty significant. And as a result, people are going to eventually go, hey, this is a more efficient way than half the crap that's out there. So, but I get ridiculed by the psychologist. Sure, that's part of the game. If you're not being crucified, you're probably not on purpose. And as Emerson said, to be great is to be misunderstood. So you got to give yourself a question. What's really the model I want to live my life by? Nobody, you don't, you can create the model of your life how you want it. There's no rules out there saying you have to do this or have to do that, except the ones you buy into. You, you subordinate to them, you're stuck in the rules that you did. Otherwise, you can create them. But just know that if you don't have the power to override those that have power, you're probably going to deal with re resistance. But that's part of the game. So if you have something you're certain about and you want to get it out there, endure the resistance. The average, no, the average leader that made a difference in the world, the polymath that did it, was usually 30 to 60 years of enduring that. And when they came out ahead, they changed history. You decide where you want to play in the game. You want to, you want to be part of a culture that's traditional and stagnant, and keep the old way, or do you want to be part of the solution for the future? It's up to you. Thank you for joining me for this presentation today. If you found value out of the presentation, please go below and please share your comments. We certainly appreciate that feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification icons. That way I can bring more content to you and share more to help you maximize your life. I look forward to our next presentation. Thank you so much for joining me.